All right, let's just talk about power app settings, right? It's one of those things we all take for granted. There's the whole settings menu, but whether you're power apps beginner or power apps advanced, power apps intermediate, doesn't matter. There's a lot there. And more importantly, everything in the settings is always changing. So if you haven't looked lately, right? Like once a week, I feel like, but if you haven't looked lately, we're just gonna run through all the different things that are there, talk a little bit about what's there, what you should turn on, what you should turn off, the ramifications, and just kind of get you more familiar. Sound like fun? Then let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over to my desktop, right? I have just a blank app I created, nothing too fancy here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on settings. Now here, right, the first one in general, these are pretty simple-ish, but there's gonna be some fun stuff as we scroll down the screen here. So name of the app, the description of the app, so these are gonna help your users find the app, so pretty good stuff to set. The app icon. You guys don't do enough with these, I know, right? Like you've all just got this blue pencil everywhere. Remember that not only could you change one of their built-in icons, but most of my customers, what they're doing is they're adding an image, right? So you build one, it's 245 by 245 pixels that represents the app. Don't use your company logo because when you got 27 apps out there, all of a sudden you got 27 apps with all the same logo, that doesn't help. So you want to kind of make one, it should look like your company, but you probably want to have one that is different or unique for each one. And of course, you can also then change the background color. And if you're using the icon, change the fill here. But you'll see all the time that I'm really kind of a fan of setting these. Um, it's a quick way to make your app feel nicer. Auto save every two minutes. You should be leaving this on. We don't want to lose any of our work. I've had a few occasions where I've had to turn it off, but not too much. Okay. Now when you get down after this little line here, these are some of the settings that are specific to your app that you want to kind of think about. Now, typically what you're going to think of is these are settings that are done, that are permanent, that are always going to be here, okay? Now, I know right off the bat, the first one says it's still in preview, so it's really weird that they put this one here. They probably had some weird reason to, but typically, you know, preview, we're not too gung-ho on those. Anyway, so you can see, like, we can make our app offline. So they have this whole new Dataverse offline way. Have you checked those out yet? It's kind of fun. Do you wanna use the new modern controls and themes? They are off still right now, right? Because right now they're not done with the, the new controls. And so you don't want an app that's like half old controls, half new controls. So like me and my team, we're still not using the modern controls, but hopefully very soon they will get to a, a maturity point where we're ready to use this. But right now we're not. You got your de delegation limit. Um, this debug published apps. So this is a really good one if you're having a hard time figuring out what's going on with an app. You can turn this on and more information will be passed through to monitor, right? So now there'll be more details, more things that you can see going on. It does slow the app down, it adds a lot of overhead. So you wouldn't wanna have this on all the time, but while you're building that complex app or you're really just focused troubleshooting, feel free to turn this on, publish it, go through it, and then make sure you get this turned back off. Um, environment variables, if you're using uh, solutions with data sources, which is probably the case, environment variables automatically created are great. And then app on start, like this one scares me, makes me think, are they gonna take away app on start? I hope not. Um, they've told me they're not going to take it away, but it's weird that you can now disable it or turn it off all the way, but there you go. So generally speaking, general settings, these are things that you're changing. These are long-term permanent additions to your app, okay? This way kind of changes gears completely. This is where you can set the size and the scale of your app, right? So was it orient, landscape or, or portrait? What sizing do you want? Um, you know, most of us build everything in that whole 16 by nine, but if you're trying to customize to a very specific device, you could, or we know that we can do responsive power apps and we can make it kind of adapt itself automatically. I typically don't mess with this too much, but just so you know what is here. Um, you know, scale to fit. So this is saying, hey, automatically try to fill it up. Like, so here on my 4K browser, right? I want it to stretch as big as it can. But if I'm on a lower resolution browser, then I want it to be smaller and try to take the space accordingly. So that's what scale to fit is doing. This is setting the aspect ratio. Um, orientation, so if you don't want them, like if they're using it on a phone or an iPad, you don't want them to be able to turn it and have the app try to adjust. You just want always to stay one orientation. You can lock that. And so these settings have all been here for a long time. This one is new here though, show mobile device notification area. So up at the top uh, on your mobile phone, right today, Power App just covers the whole screen. So you can't see all the, the bars and all the things across the top. So what you can do here is if you turn this on, 
Then when you're looking at it on your mobile phone, now you'll see all the stuff across the top. So this probably makes for a more traditional experience because your users want to still be able to see the time, the bars, that type of stuff. Um, up to you, but you do need to turn this on. Okay, so that's display. Upcoming features. Now they've told me they're going to rename these at some point. Well, they've told us in general, right? Like, but they haven't, so that's okay. What I want you to just think about is there's three buckets here, right? So whether if they change the names later, it doesn't matter. Preview are typically features that are, they've said, hey, we're almost done with this feature. It's coming out. It's going to be just part of your app really soon. So you should probably be using it and getting familiar with it. Okay. Preview, generally safe features. Experimental, these are features that are like, hey, we're trying some stuff out. This feature might just get cut. This feature might get completely changed. This feature might go forward just the way it is. We don't know. Typically speaking, experimental features are features you do not want to use in a production app. Every now and then I break that rule, but overall we try to kind of stay away from those in production apps because they can radically change as they go from experimental into preview and into production, and nobody wants their whole app to blow up because the feature radically changed. I have had that happen. It's not fun. Retire, these are features that are going away. Okay, So let's run through these real quick and just talk about these. Because one of my pieces of advice to you is that on a regular basis, you should be coming in here and reading the list. I know, reading is boring. I'm sorry. But, you know, knowing what's in here just kind of gives you an idea. The other trick that I use, right, notice that we just created a brand new app. And so in this brand new app, there's a bunch of these turned on. If I was to go to one of your apps that you published two years ago and a new feature had rolled out since then, it would not necessarily be turned on, right? So if you're ever looking at an old app like, hey, is it a good idea to turn on delayed load? Well, I would create a brand new app on that day and be like, hey, is delayed, on, delayed load on by default? It is. That tells me that Microsoft feels pretty good about that feature and it's probably safe. Like you should still test. Don't just go turn it on because it's on here. But it tells you that it's one that they feel, you know, they feel pretty good that it's in a good place. So this is kind of a point of reference as well. Just create a new app, see what's there. And as you're reading through these, think about it. Like, you know, would it make my old app faster if I turn on explicit column selection? I bet it would, right? If you got an app that's three or four years old that doesn't have this feature on, it limits the amount of data that gets pulled in with your collections. And so by pull, limiting the amount of data that gets pulled in, it's less resources on the network side, it's less resources on the device. This is a great performance feature. Now, when it first came out, I forget how many years ago, the feature didn't work very well and it kind of broke stuff. So if I turned it on that day, it would have broken my existing apps. But it's matured, it's really good now, and so that's a great example of a feature you'd want to check out. Um, let's see, is there other ones in here I want to talk about? Right, there's a lot of these, like I said, go through these. This making the dates easier to use, <laughs> yay. Um, oh, this one, so keep recently view, visited screens in memory. It's off by default because it can have bad effects, but it can also have good effects. So Daniel on my team, one of his customers, he turned this on and it made their apps radically faster. It fixed a lot of the performance issues they were having. At a cost though, when he, when it, what it does here is it basically says, hey, you know, I came to this screen and had a gallery with a thousand things going on. It took forever to render, right? And then normally when you leave that screen, Power Apps just deletes it. And then when you go back to that screen, it's got to re-render all that again, okay? So Daniel turned this on. And so for his users, when they went to that screen, it rendered. But then when they left and came back, it just pulled it right back from memory. It's like boom, 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 boom. It made the app snappier. The challenge is that because it's keeping it in memory, it is consuming device resources. So if Daniel's doing it on a PC with 64 gigs of RAM, who cares, right? But if Daniel's app is running on a mobile phone from five years ago, right? Like he literally might catch it on fire. It probably doesn't have the RAM resources to hold all those screens in memory. So you gotta be careful, right? You gotta, you know, give your pound of flesh here. So yes, it's faster, but it consumes more resources. But if you got the resources, faster is good. But if you have a bunch of lightweight screens, then don't mess with this, right? That's why it's off by default. But that's a neat one to kind of look at. Um, let's see, anything else in here we want to talk about? Do, 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 do. If you're having any problems with the Copilot or chatbot stuff not showing up in your old apps, it's a feature you gotta go turn on. Just click a switch, boom, it's gone, or it's on, right? Some more of that offline stuff, uh, files and images in offline, right? Once again, takes a lot of extra storage. Or maybe the new crazy formula bar that is borderline driving me insane this week. 
you could turn it off. Okay? So cool stuff in there. Experimental. Um, so here, you know, you've got things like, you know, remember, these are features that may or may not make it. Uh, like this optimized embedding appearance. This has been here for like five years now. <laughs> I don't know if it's ever leaving. We don't ever use it, but it's there. You're doing stuff with application insights. There's a bunch of stuff here. I've never used it. Um, the web barcode scanner. It's kind of funny. He was production. He was GA. Then he got retired. Now he's moved back to experimental, right? They kind of keep moving him around. They can't figure out what they want to do with that one. So, but if you need the barcode scanner to work with a PC, which doesn't make sense to me, but the old style one, anyway, you could do that. This one here, if you're doing uh, databases like uh, Dataverse, for example, it has a bunch of relationships, a bunch of lookup columns, and you want to be able to pull in those child data in all in one fail swoop, you can turn this on. Once again, it has a lot of performance ramifications. Um, this PDF function has been here for like a year now. I, like, I want to use it, but because it stays here, it tells me that they're not happy with it. So I just keep making PDFs the way we've always made PDFs. One day, maybe we will. And speaking of that, you also will notice that typically I don't make videos about things that are experimental. I don't want you to use them yet. When this moves to preview, I'll probably make a video about it that week. But until then, it sits here. So there you go. So this is an experimental. Last but not least, these are retired. These are features that are basically saying, hey, are going away. Like, so for example, they've retired navigate function app on start. But we know that if you're doing deep linking today, doing it my way, that I need navigate function on app on start to be there. So I turn this back on. They've told me it's not going to go away. They're not going to get rid of it, rid of it until, um, you know, they have a viable replacement for me. So I'm cool with it. I know at some point I'll have to fix some things, but right now this is the best way for me to do deep linking in a power app. So I just turn it on. Um, anything else in here? Do, 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 do. Not really, right? Oh, there's the legacy barcode scanner. So maybe that one's different than the one we just saw in experimental. So maybe it didn't move. Maybe it's I, I, like, this is where me not paying enough attention, seeing that now there's a two in there. So then there's a old barcode scanner that's going away, but now there's a legacy one that, or sorry, but there's a new experimental one. Like these are the things that you only know by coming in here and reading on a regular basis. Uh, anything else in here? I don't think so. Okay. So keeping up with these, right? This isn't a one-time thing. Reading, reading is your friend, right? It's not boring. It's not something you need to fall asleep at night. I need a new book, by the way. I just finished one and I don't know what I'm reading next. Anyway, but <laughs> there you go. Um, last school screen here, support. So this is where you can get to some of their documentation. If you ever have a support case, they might want the session details. It's like when I work on them to troubleshoot bugs, they want me to send them that big old dump of information. So they'll tell you where it's at if you need it. Um, this is the version of Power Apps you're currently authoring against. You can change the authoring version. We're not going to go over this today. Um, typically, I also don't recommend changing this unless you have a really specific reason. So we're not going to get into how this all works today, but know that technically speaking, you can change the authoring versions. So topic for another day, maybe. Okay. It's not something I want you guys doing. Though. Those are your Power App settings, right? And like I said, those are helpful for beginners, advanced people, intermediate people. We all should just be coming in here on a regular basis going through these settings because they're going to help us see what's coming, what's going out, and help us maybe tweak our app and make it a little bit faster, right? Like if you didn't know about that whole hidden screen or that um, save screens in memory, right? Like I guarantee one of you right now is thinking, man, I'm about to go make my production app faster, right? High five. I love it. Make sure you test it. But you don't know what you don't know. Reading through these on a regular basis helps with that. And so speaking of not knowing what you don't know, uh, remember, you know, I've got my training classes. If you need help, right, you want to learn, you want to be more awesome at this. We got Power Platform University. We got the live training classes. We got the on-demand training classes. We got mentoring. We got one-on-one, -on -one, just fix your problems. Heck, we can even do your whole project for like this poof. You guys do it for me. We are here for you. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.